Hey there, I'm a psychopath. That means I'm allowed to justify any action I take in my own mind and that makes it okay. Now who says a psychopath can't be attractive? In fact, I am very not. I'm, I'm not that. Of course, as a psychopath, I am 100% punch power, the lowest of intelligence, and potentially the coolest person you may ever meet. I barfed. Sometimes I play basketball after yes, I kill all the players. So anyways, I headed out with this guy to go rescue this person who's sleeping in a bathtub. People always want to say hi to me, but I'd probably tell them no. I always make sure to store the best ones for winter. Other than that, we decided that all the people in this room needed to go, so of course I just naturally did what I've done since I was a wee lass and I cleaned the room. And then I headed to my sleeping location. But once again, when I arrived, there were people. I tried to sleep, but everyone outside my room was so loud that I asked them all to leave. There were quite a few of them, but I'm very convincing. I found a wrench. I used the wrench to ask this man for his vehicular device. I thanked him as I drove by. Using the truck as a battering ram, I felt like my intelligence was 1,000, not three. So this lady kept calling me, telling me where I could find high priority targets, which was very convenient for my manhunt. Fun fact, did you know that it's a lot more likely to be cold and snow the further north or south you go away from the equator? Fascinating, really. So anyways, everyone was dead. The lady called me again to tell me how great of a job I did. Guess I was expecting something more, like more discretion. I celebrated by beating up a bunch of heathens. I found someone trying to practice her gymnastics, so I helped her jump over the bar to increase her vertical leap capabilities. She failed. I now started using my fists to knock out enemies. I didn't want to kill them until they were unarmed, of course. After that escapade, I found a car, so naturally I ran over someone at my earliest convenience. Now I managed to use my wrench to help fix the ugly faces of some local gang members along with their hostage. Then I stumbled across a father and son business. Clearly, they were trying to sell some illegally poached fish shoes. Not in my wholesome night city, they wouldn't. A monk asked me to save his brother, but not kill anyone. I accidentally killed everyone. While I was practicing my parkour, I slipped and fell two feet and I died. The pirate lady called me about some guy that she wanted me to check on, but when she mentioned, Max is a media and a good friend of mine. Oh, I know what she wanted me to do. The man shriveled up into some sort of humanified prune, but not in a good way. The pirate lady wasn't the happiest, but I knew she was joyful on the inside. Not Probably. Working. I should have known a merc like you wouldn't be up to the task. My next objective was to find a nurse who was nursing. That's pretty much all I knew, so I just killed everyone I could. But when I found her, it was already too late. I'm she had doctor, totally healed someone. Well, I put a That's stop to that nonsense. Then I was viciously attacked by a leopard print wearing yoga instructor. She did use the usual yoga instructor arm blades to slash at me. Luckily, I had a wrench. The more I drove around, the more I realized that literally every single person in this city is a bad guy. Even after I would rescue the hostages, they would try to leave without giving me their wallet, so I had to destroy them too. I ended up peacefully raiding some sort of building because the pirate lady told me to. But then I walked in on this human. Hey. Where'd you come from? I figured all the babbling was that he wanted me to kill him. On my top secret stealth what mission to find that? some person, I found myself in a really bad part of town. So, being me, I punched my way quietly through the streets, pretty much a ghost. When I found the person of interest, she broke all her limbs just to point a gun at me. Now that's commitment. With that kind of power, I did what I've never done before, killed someone. The pirate lady said the exact reassuring words I needed to hear. I thought you'd handle things differently. Like, I don't know, using words? I then accidentally hit a man with my truck, followed up by me playing soccer or tennis or something with a bunch of enemies. But in this situation, I had a baseball bat and they had mortal bodies. Then the hostage tried to get away, again. So naturally, I got into a fight with two brothers and beat them both senseless in one punch each. I took my prize money, thanked them for the fight, and then bombed their building. And then I found a man who was drowned by his cat because he obviously never taught it how to properly drive. Once again, I found myself rescuing yet another hostage. But then the unexpected happened. I killed the hostage again. So I made a silent and discreet getaway, which ended up in me murdering three people in a tunnel under a bridge with a stick or something. 
The pirate lady found someone of interest, so I just guessed that everyone in the club was bad. Well, turns out they were, so the cops decided to join in and help me. A lot of innocent people died that day, but it was for the better, probably. After that fiasco, I found an abandoned car, what luck, and accidentally didn't drive safely. There was no party, but this guy did say, so I slapped him in the face and accidentally killed the hostage. Luckily, for every hostage I kill, there's always another couple out there somewhere, so I will not stop until I have found them all and try my best not to kill them. Well, my time had come. I forced myself through about an hour and a half of pretty much unchangeable intro story, flew off a bridge, tried to play the silent psychopath with Meredith, and approached the Maelstrom Fort with a peace offering. But I changed my mind about the peace thing about two seconds in. Luckily, I had a rusted pipe. Then, as the wholesome soul that I am, I freed the trapped prisoner from life. And finally, I killed Titanfall Mini. Then I stopped a bunch of people from possibly making a bad life decision and maybe doing drugs, possibly assuming that they have them or something. Regardless, a lesson was learned. The pirate phone lady wanted me to bring this cyber psycho in alive. Thing is, I'm the only psycho around these parts. The more I killed the psychos, the more I realized that I wasn't actually that bad of a person. These people are the real monsters. These are the terrible people. So anyways, I shot the janitor by accident, but it's okay because the cop showed up and I shot them too. After besting the cop, then I was legally allowed to shoot and or use a pipe to tear a family apart. That's the law. After that, I did all the usual things people do on their time off. You know, like, argued for money, stayed at a hotel, watch a son murder his father, kill all the hotel management, watch your friend bleed out after a firefight, die, but live, witness your killer not live. And that's it. I was free. Now I started my psychotic new life by calling my dead best friend's mom and telling her I just didn't care. Followed up by learning how to drive on the sidewalk better. I still need practice, that's for sure. The pirate lady called me again, telling me that she thought there was a more superior psycho. So I went in there with the mindset of a beehive on cocaine, mostly because I was. On cocaine, that is. <laughs> Not bees, that wouldn't be okay. A cold body's no good to check so keep him alive. Well, I got back into my car and safely exited the area at maximum safety levels. I mean, I was so safe, I was looking right behind me the whole time, making sure I did not back up into anyone. I got hungry, so I headed towards a hot dog stand. Everyone did die in the process, but hey, can't let a psycho go hangry, am I right, fellas? Turns out they only sold meth there. So I did try to hide this body I found, but there was already a body in the car. So I didn't know what to do with all of them. I just drove the truck into the ocean, but I missed. I then allowed Metal Neck Guy to look like an absolute idiot at a burger joint. Listen. No, tough guy, you listen. <laughs> what an unlikable and not at all internet adored character. Look at that disappointment. What a failure of a human being. Then blue hair girl called me, but all I cared about was finding a way to absolutely ruin her life. What I just say? Drop it. Our relationship was off to a great start. Well, I found a garbage tower, so I climbed it to the very top. But sadly, someone had already been here and killed everyone. Then I tried to climb to the top. Psychos aren't allowed up there, turns out. Then, I dramatically executed this person. Oh no, whoops, there goes another innocent. Finally, I had arrived at a ripper dock and acquired the gorilla arms. Now, I had the license to legally kill everyone. Turns out, they work great on everyone. Boys, girls, elders, there's nobody I wouldn't fight. Then I met Country Girl. She was angry and helpless. Whatever burdened her? Well, I was determined to make it worse. So I finally spoke to cyberpunk Moira, and by spoke, I mean blamed her for the death of her friend and spat in her face. Then I refused to drink her stupid drink. After that, I left the bar, coughed up some blood, and beat up some nerd outside. Sadly, my baseball bat activated an invisibility cloak, so it just made things awkward when killing people. I'm a ring. Somebody call the cops! When I was right in the middle of a conversation with Metal Neck, I was rudely interrupted by Fridge Man. Well, I did what anybody else would do in this situation. I carried him gently to a strange car and put him in the trunk. Roadkill quickly killed a cyber psycho and accidentally made sure he was dead. 
and drove the car into a lake. Then I got a text that I had successfully taken care of Fridge Man. Job well done. I got attacked by a gremlin, so I just pushed him over. I got attacked by a cop, so I just pushed him over. Then Metal Silence. Neck's partner, brooding emo teen but adult human, confronted us about some sort of middle school drama. But since I'm better than that, I just told him I'd kill him later because tonight doesn't work out. Because tonight, I was trying to once again absolutely humiliate Metal Neck in front of a ton of people, specifically his fan. Wow. Old lady then offered me a job to deliver a car. Sounded easy enough until I found out there was a man in the trunk. Then it was even easier. Turns out they didn't want me to do that. So anyways, I went to a dealer and bought a brand new sports car. But about 20 seconds later, I decided it just wasn't a good fit for my personality. During one of my missions, I came across a raging family feud, not even hosted by Steve Harvey. But at that exact moment, I was just a little too busy to do anything about it. I rang the doorbell to deliver some object, and the guy actually opened the door. A rookie mistake. So I deleted all of his Google Chrome passwords to teach him a lesson. Lucky for the arguing daughter and father, I could now help by intervening in their argument. So, uh... Apparently, I wasn't supposed to kill the guy at that door. I was just supposed to bring him pizza or something. I, I decided to lay low for a bit, you know, keep quiet for a bit, you know, blend into the traffic, blend into the world. Just allow yourself to be seen like every other normal civilian would be seen. I headed across the city to go complete some recon quests. I'm good at those. Somehow, I got on the roof and I just assumed I had to kill everyone up there because no normal person goes on a roof. Now, this was pretty easy. I managed to stay completely undetected the entire time just like i was asked in fact they asked me not even to get noticed not even to hurt anyone like i wasn't even there better yet i killed absolutely everyone because who's gonna witness when there's no one left alive to witness and then i stole all of the tim horton's coffee recipe ideas you were to do this quietly Job well done. Then somehow I actually managed to enter the Night City subway system, which I thought was taken out of the game. At this point, I silently stole this vehicle, but the owners tried to attack me, so I had to defend myself. Also, I had to defend myself against the cops. Some people in a back alley invited me to kill them all via punching, so of course I obliged. Sadly, one of them was actually an innocent who just happened to get caught in the crossfire of my fists. Wanting to make up for that last mistake, I headed to the nearest back alley to find criminals with a hostage to practice my restraint. But yet again, terrible, terrible temptation. At every corner I turned, it seemed like a new gang was there waiting for me to fight them for their hostages. And fight them I did. The hostages, I mean. Then one of them had the audacity to use the H-E double hockey sticks word in my peaceful night city. His is spine is now in his stomach. Finally, after what felt like forever in psycho years, I had arrived at a party. This is a party, right? Golly like gee whiz, this is gonna be a party to remember. After everyone knew who I was because I was the life of the party, I went to the local Ripper Dock. Unfortunately, there was still one remaining partier, so I allowed him to join the choir invisible. The pirate lady once again showed me the exact location of someone she didn't want me to kill. So I accidentally killed them with extreme prejudice and an incredible amount of EMP grenades. And then I texted her whoops because it was an accident. I then found a car and a man. I did try to shake him off, but he was pretty much immortal. And then I hopped into a bomb shelter filled with farmable XP. Sadly, some leeches tried to steal the spot from me, so I needed to ask them all politely yet firmly to leave the area, or I would have to escort them off the premises. At least I, uh, at least I, I think I asked them. I can now farm XP in peace.
I also found out that my hands can apparently light people on fire. <laughs> so that's a pretty nifty little trick. I will contact you before the parade. Until then, try not to get into any more trouble. Now with that being said, I pretty much went into hiding. Not even a soul saw me. I felt quite disconnected from society for a while. But hey, it was very important for me to keep quiet during this time. Sometimes when I cold, I start fires with my fists. After a very quiet and lack of activity filled night, I went for a nice rainy night drive, but somehow took a wrong turn at Alb or something rather and ended up killing a ton of people. I even put this guy right here and brought this guy to his truck. Luckily, I arrived here just in time to kill a hostage being held hostage. Phew, that was a close one. Then, now get this, I broke into someone's house to pull an absolutely epic prank. But then I heard that a hospital was holding hostages or patients, one or the other, so there was only one thing I could do. Fun fact, did you know that consuming moderate amounts of caffeinated beverages actually counts as hydrating as water would? Very, very interesting stuff. Well, anyways, everyone was dead. It was time to meet up with a blue hair angry girl, so I called my car which somehow resulted in chaos and death. Classic me. On my way to Blue Hair Girl, I got into another fight with a bunch of the village idiots. This guy's knees gave out, so I helped him stand back up. Sadly, I couldn't manage to save the hostages this time. There's always next time though. Now I had officially made enough people drop wallets to purchase legendary gorilla arms, meaning I could now punch people. Full of optimism, I ran outside and punched the nearest person right into a garbage can. These new arms can really take out the trash. <laughs> Sadly, the hostage didn't survive the joke. My new gorilla arms were so strong that they could make a man die after he died. I could also now try to protect hostages in style. After helping multiple hostages for a change and just a rich guy, I managed to finally do my task at hand and delivered a car to its owner. Sadly, the car became sentient and as per usual, created quite the scene in public. I felt so embarrassed. Luckily, I made up for it by doing this. Now, unlike my previous psychopathic life somewhere in space, I was unable to bear arms in a lot of these areas. So I went outside the areas and killed them from a distance. After the depressing act of not being able to murder an entire clan because I felt like it, I visited Blue Hair Girl just basically to make some senseless and arrogant demands of her to the point where she kicked me out. I don't have time for verbal volleyball. You know or not. All right, enough. Get lost. I felt good about this. I then hit people with a big hammer. After Hammer, I headed straight to what I could only assume to be some sort of roller skating arena. When I paid for my shoes, they asked me to store my weapons. We have a strict no weapons policy. Little did they realize my greatest weapon was actually my dashing good looks, but mostly my gorilla arms. Now I figuratively in a literal way beat the ever living snot out of each and every sad sorry excuse for a bodyguard in this pizza joint. Eventually, I found myself holding a hockey stick, so I used it pretty much to become someone who kills people with a hockey stick for a living. Finally, I had arrived at the big boss's room, whose door was made of pure Beskar. So using a 100 IQ method, I simply told him to drop the big iron on his hip. Being the wannabe courier he was, he opened the door as to which I asked him to kindly accept punches to his brain. Unfortunately, he didn't make it for some reason. So as quiet as I came in, I peacefully and silently made my way out. I made sure nobody even knew I was there. In fact, at this point, I'm pretty sure I don't even exist on the grid. I grabbed my weapons, said goodbye, and got scared by a fourth wall breaking NPC. What if I'm the player? <laughs> then the guy in my head talked to me, so I said anything I could to insult him in every way. Next, I made my way to a beauty salon where I had an accident. Some guy got angry, so I hacked the door to the room so I could go in first. The ponytail guy immediately made me angry, so I took his ear hostage. He did try to tell me the info I wanted to hear, but I didn't want to hear it. Blue hair moody girl got upset, which was great. Then I met the bratty brunette. I beat up her car until she did what I told her to. Then I met her friends who I would hopefully kill someday. Eventually I got roped into joining her killing a bunch of people that stole her truck, which is exactly the opposite of what I really wanted to do. Then in probably what was the greatest interaction between us, I basically told her that all of her ideas were terrible and that I don't care about her in the least. Are you joking? Tell me. We can talk about Nash later. Later? When? V, I have to do this. Do you understand? Nash made a fool of you, I get it. But don't try and make one out of me. 
That was our deal. Then she got furious for some reason and then went silent. I treasured every moment of this trip. The next day we rode bikes together. That was until she outright attacked me with her bike and then had a breakdown or something. I also treasured these moments. Finally, she sent me one more text, trying to connect with me or something. She just dragged on, so I didn't even read it. I just said, okay. All of a sudden, I found myself with some big dude who wanted me to plug in my headphones to his computer. I tried to break away and just kill everyone in the building, but once again, my psychopathic run was halted by the game not being a full RPG. Well, at this point, I realized that if I wanted people to die, I would just have to be a puppet for a bit. So I figured that I'd pretty much just kill everyone and be as loud as possible in Rebellion, which was great considering the big dude just kept yelling at me to be quiet the entire time. After I brutally destroyed an entire mall of gang members, beat the tar out of some giant woman, and illegally downloaded a car, I was betrayed, and the big dude thought I was dead. I would remember that. I then rode a roller coaster completely emotionless while the guy in my head acted like a total buffoon. What a loser. The bratty brunette would not leave me alone. She kept calling me with so-called important garbage, but I knew that this was probably just some sort of pyramid scheme. No way I believed it was actually anything serious, so I just pretended like I was busy killing a ton of people and it was interrupting our call. Now we can talk. Go ahead. Finish this another time. Okay, I'm back. Talk. V, it's a life and death thing. I'm serious. I got one of those on my hands too. Sorry. And that was the last time I would ever hear from her. Finally, life ruined. Then blue hair girl calls at the worst possible moment. So of course I answered just to snub her one second into the call. Then she got all dramatic. So I started killing again just to find any excuse to leave the conversation. At this point, I peacefully made my way across the gross part of town, met a bunch of really cool people partying along the way, along with some officers, just really enjoyed the scenery and all there was to do in this area. And then I hit the jackpot, dead guys. Wow, we what a treat. And a lot of them at that. I got to follow a long string of them across the pier like a kid hunting for Easter eggs. And at the end, I found the Easter Bunny, who was actually a cyber psycho. I killed him on sight without any remorse. Then I remembered I wasn't actually supposed to do that. Then I ruined bonfire night, along with truck show off night and take a hostage hostage night. Problem was that I forgot the hostage was there. Silly me. I found a bunch of cool people living under a bridge, so naturally I offed them all with a shotgun and then accidentally killed the hostage again. I then accidentally drove very recklessly and ended up having just to kill a bunch of people with an invisible shotgun. Then I got caught texting and driving. Then I got caught texting and grenade throwing. Then Pirate Lady called me again to take this guy alive, which was a shame because even though he was still alive, I'd already kind of planned that he wouldn't be. Just really unfortunate. You can't change faith though. So, good news. I climbed a window and punched a man today. Then I ended up killing everyone in the restaurant below completely out of bad habit, which I should really look into, but I definitely won't. Some local people were having a barbecue, so I killed them all for not inviting me. It just makes me angry when people don't invite me to everything I'm not invited to. Like this vending machine party. These people are just standing around here assuming I'm not interested, but I'm always interested. Then I caught some secondhand smoke spreaders standing outside a weird building, so I stopped them before they hurt someone. Problem is, the shards in the skull of a courier who's currently stretched out on the crematorium slab. Well, with that information, I silently made my way through the crematorium, which I suppose is some sort of dairy factory. Luckily, I just assumed everyone there was a bad guy, so all of my actions were immediately justified. Even the cops came to help me out at one point, but alas, I got sick, so I went to the bathroom. Within moments, the cops had left and they had forgotten all about me, like I was nothing to them. I looked at myself in the mirror. Was I really a monster? No way, not with a face like that. So I just kept on killing with a smile on a face and a skip in my step. A lot of bad guys died there this day. Still not sure why everyone was here staring at this hologram guy, but hey, to each dairy factory their own. Next, I met up with Metal Neck Man, who told me the plan. Then I accidentally killed his friend and made sure he was dead. Grab this on yourself. I will remember this. And then we shot the queen, killed some reporters, flipped him around with a car. It was just a really great night. Until I forgot the code. When I finally remembered the secret knock, Mr. Incredible just happened to run through our building and knocked it down. 
I had to go save Metal Neck so later on I could disappoint him further. The voice in my head was always getting more and more annoying, so each time he showed up, I just insulted him and That's left. It. It I seemed to be Johnny. the right thing to do. Then blue hair girl told me to come over immediately. It sounded important. It wasn't. She told me she quit smoking years ago, but wanted to reignite her addiction. Who was I to stop someone with such a passion? Here. Then I helped an old man cross to the other side. Some tuxedo lady called me, but Metal Neck Man decided to budge in on the conversation. It was kind of hard to understand them both at the same time, but I suppose that just helps with the immersion. Then, some random guy got in my car, so I did what came naturally to me. I drove him into the river. Turns out, he's immortal. After an invisible shotgun fight where no one probably got hurt, I headed to Tuxedo Lady's apartment. On the elevator ride, I played my favorite waiting game, Shoot Gun. I knocked aggressively on the door and then didn't say anything to create paranoia, but of course, I just couldn't resist talking. I did what came naturally to me, tried to shoot the lock to get in. Unfortunately, she opened the door and I shot her instead. I had now entered a boss fight. Sadly, it didn't last long. Really terrible boss fight, if I'm being honest. Then I got to ride the the elevator again then i got to ride a flying car i'll tell you there was nothing more exciting than being able to soar over night city until of course i i fell off i found a secret sewer casino which i didn't know the password into there were guards waiting for me but i knew it was all just a test to see if i was cool enough to get in turns out i was very cool well silly me i went in there and forgot it wasn't a fight club man oh man was i embarrassed but I knew I couldn't stop now or I'd look even more weird. Even the bartender was on the floor just cringing at me. I put him out of that cringe. Luckily, I was able to annihilate every living thing in that fight club and help someone wake up from a deep sleep. After I made sure my job was well done, and that's where the problem started. There were so many people trying to stop me from leaving. I was continuously attacked and was forced to defend myself. It was difficult for me to do this, but I did what had to be done. Luckily, I could take my mind off of things by going to another truck barbecue party. Always a good time and helps me to unwind. Well, I made it back to the big dude's lair, but it seemed like the immortal car man also wanted to check out the facility as well. He seems like a chill guy. Yeah. Then I met trash bag trench coat lady who led me into an underground bathhouse. Sadly, their hot tubs had way too much ice for my liking. After falling asleep in the tub and dreaming about beating up some nerdy cameraman geek, I woke up and climbed on out, only to be greeted by trash bag trench coat lady again. I told her that her hot tub sucked and I wasn't about to pay full price for a terrible time. Well, that response turned out exactly as I wanted it to. Just like every other bathhouse experience I've had, it turned into a battle to the death. Every single member, VIP, casual, didn't matter. They were all trying to stop me from not paying the full fee. But I wasn't about to give in to pure pressure. Finally, the big dude stood in my way. I knocked him immediately to the ground, but showed mercy. Only for a second, though, mercy is weakness without pain. All in all, awful spa day treatment. Zero out of ten. Once again, I found me talking to myself. I insulted me to my face and successfully offended myself enough to leave the conversation. Score one for me, zero for myself. Then blue hair girl calls literally at the worst moment. Would you help? No, that's stupid. Why would I help someone who literally- So I ended up meeting blue hair girl anyways. We met with some weird desk lady who thought she was way cooler than she actually was. I just called her stupid a ton and then left. That tactic always seems to work on the non-killable NPC. So I raced off to find anything to do as I waited. Lucky for me, someone called me up and asked me to come and kill them. Then I met with Metal Girl. She asked me to kill her boyfriend. So anyways, I met up with that random guy who tricked me. Empty. And then he threatened me by threatening me. So I... Then Blue Hair Girl told me to come and plan the heist. I was a little busy at the moment, but I told her I would be there soon. My life is so packed. So I met with the gang of currently unkillable misfits, and we planned to do something. After we planned, but I wasn't paying attention, I went on to finish some unfinished business. First, I fought some guy for his stupid sniper rifle so I could dismantle it right in front of his face. He barely put up a fight, and then after we fought, he acted like that sniper was his wife. So I had to kill all of his best men to get it, and then him again. Luckily, I was able to finish the fight a little bit more practically this time. The crafting components were all mine. I then went and waited for the final fight. And honestly, I don't even know how I got here. When three weeks had passed, a lady came to get me for the fight. I was ready. I went in there, did a lot of punching, and won the championship like it was nothing. What a loser. 
Of course, at this point, I beat up an entire apartment complex, rescued Samus from Nintendo, and accidentally dropped her off of a two-story building. Cyberpunk Moira rang me up and told me I needed to kill a ton of people for the voice in my head. Obviously, this sounded ideal, so I agreed. She did say quiet, but what she didn't realize is quiet is my name, if my name was quiet. I silently made my way through the facility, not a guard even suspected a thing, and in the end, I managed to secure everything I needed. Then I got the voice in my head a car. So that's pretty cool, or whatever. Cyberpunk Moira accidentally only smacked the guy, so I helped. Now that I had gotten into Cyberpunk Moira's good books, the voice in my head asked her out on a date. She said yes. Okay. Everything was going great. I picked her up in the car that I bought the voice in my head, and we proceeded to a very romantic location. Things were going so smooth. So yeah, apparently things didn't go so smooth, but that's okay now because she hates me and never wants to see me again. Then in the middle of a very important moment of my life, blue hair girl calls again. She wanted to meet me at the Mega Tower. Unfortunately, I went to the completely wrong Mega Tower, which resulted in the loss of many, many lives unnecessarily. But that's just the sacrifice I was willing to make. I fought my way up to the hostage, who I needed to secure, I think, and made the path clear for a grand escape. I carried her up to the roof for extraction. Now, I couldn't remember if there was something below to catch her. I just assumed there was there wasn't. In the middle of a gang fight, I got a call which completely threw me off and I accidentally killed the hostage. And then finally there I was, on the elevator to do something I didn't pay attention to at all. Luckily, if they hired me, they knew I was only there for the free shampoo in the bathrooms. So with that, I fought as if my life depended on acquiring them all. I fought in the name of shampoo, if I'm being honest here. I even hit the unconscious body so no one would know I was there. Finally, I made it to some sort of VR Zoom meeting. Luckily, I had grenades. When everything was done, Weird Desk Lady got all mad at me because she wanted all the hotel shampoo. And no one can stop me. Not their corpses, not yours. Well, I was not about to have any of that drama. So I suppose Blue Hair Girl wasn't really happy that I did that. I told her it was obviously okay that I did this, but she didn't believe me. What a fool. Well, at least the relationship was now the worst it could get. Then I made my way to kill the boyfriend of Metal Woman. He tried to use excuses and words and stuff, but who even does that to explain themselves? Hello? V? What's up? Caught him in the VIP room with some chick. Ordered champagne. What did they talk about? Can't say. Don't think they talked for long, though. Well, my adventure was soon you coming to an up. end. My retirement was on the verge of happening when this lady pushed me around at a club and pulled a gun on me. Sadly, I was unable to defend myself, but luckily she killed a ton of people in the bar for me. Eventually, she was knocked out by a guard and feeling responsible, I felt like I needed to take her to a hospital or something. We went on quite the adventure that night, and although she couldn't hear me or answer back, I knew that in some way she could. She was both physically and metaphorically in a trunk, which was pretty cool in my opinion. We drove many miles in many stolen vehicles. I killed heaps of people in the local parks, making sure that they wouldn't ruin this fun night out on the city. After two days of walking and driving, we got into a totally golden car and drove to the same spot I broke up with Cyberpunk Moira. She was finally in a better place. After word of my actions spread, I was officially the most wanted person in the world, which, you know, it, it made me feel very special. Well, apparently I was so special that they put me in space. So maybe this was just a prequel, after all.